Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Amr al -Mugi. I haven't taught you anything yet, but hopefully I'll be teaching you Introduction to Communication Networks in the fifth semester. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, be with you today to give you the orientation session for choosing the majors. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that we uh, certainly miss you a lot here at the uh, campus and we look forward to having you back. Uh, this, this, uh, or these orientation sessions usually are a chance for us to talk with you about our vision for the faculty and about what we do, uh, the differences between the majors. Uh, so uh, uh, this certainly is going to be a little bit different for us and especially for me, uh, but um, we'll be still uh, happy to give you all this information and uh, uh, discuss with you any questions uh, that you may have over email. So uh, you have a big decision to make. Uh, which is uh, choosing your uh, major at the faculty of MET. Uh, you have started this journey a couple of years ago and you have chosen your faculty and now you have to decide what major you will, uh, you will pick and this decision will have quite an impact on the remainder of your, uh, or on all of your career basically. So choosing a major is a very big step and hopefully in this session I will be able to give you some information about how to think about uh, this decision, what to consider, what information should you have uh, while making uh, this decision. So um, before I actually start talking about any uh, details of the majors, uh, let me just share with you a little bit about the vision of the faculty itself, because regardless of which of the uh, two majors you would end up uh, choosing, uh, you will be part of the vision of the MET faculty. And the MET faculty embraces a, uh, an education that combines research and practical experience uh, so that you're prepared for any type of career you want. This is actually the vision for the German uh, education system. We give you a strong theoretical foundation and uh, extensive practical uh, work so that first of all you are ready for uh, uh, market work in a, a variety of different kinds of um, uh, fields and you're also ready to pursue an academic career, a research career, if that's something that you're that you are interested in. Uh, we know at the MET that knowledge alone and uh, academic uh, knowledge especially alone is not enough. So we focus also on strong interpersonal skills and having a network of uh, uh, colleagues, a network of friends that can actually help you find a job after you graduate. An important part of our philosophy at the MET is that we don't just teach you certain knowledge, we would like to teach you how to learn. Because after you graduate, this is what you will end up uh, doing. You'll be on your own. And in companies, no one will actually take your hand and slowly teach you how to do this job. You are actually expected to do the, jo to do the job before you even start. And so you have to teach yourself. And this is something that we uh, like to think that we teach you at uh, the MET. So this is what you will be doing regardless of which major you will uh, uh, be choosing. And so now we come to uh, our decision. How do we think about choosing the major? Um, when we give orientation sessions about how to choose the faculty, we tell the students, basically there are five questions that you have to ask yourself. Uh, and these are actually the same questions that you have to ask yourself when you're choosing the major. Why is this faculty important? Why is the major important? Uh, what will I study? Do, will I like the type of courses? Will I like the type of uh, knowledge that I will be getting from these courses? Do I have the certain skills? Does it match my talents? Will I enjoy it? For example, someone may uh, think that they uh, like music, for example, but they are not skilled in playing an instrument. and so. It doesn't match their talents. And so you have to choose something that matches your talents, not just something that you think is fancy and nice from the outside. And uh, the fourth question is, how is the environment in the faculty? Are the faculty helpful? Are they always there? Do they provide support for the students? These are obviously very uh, important issues that you have to consider while choosing your major. And finally, the most important question is, what are the career opportunities? Because regardless of which major you choose, at some point you will graduate from the GUC, you will graduate as uh, uh, an MET graduate, and after that you have to pursue a career in the field, and it is important to consider the career opportunities in this case. Okay. <clears throat> so, you are an METian, 
So you have to know what are the perks of being an MET. Studying computer science and engineering is something that is required in all fields. Um, if you are following, for example, the hype regarding data science and machine learning and artificial intelligence, you know that uh, th this kind of knowledge is required in all domains, in healthcare, in industry, in uh, transportation, in uh, the tech field, everything requires computer scientists. And so being an MET graduate prepares you for a very wide variety of, uh, of uh, careers. And if you don't leave me, uh, if you don't believe me, I will uh, leave you a little bit with this video to tell you a little bit more from the experts in the field. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, uh, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was eight years old. I was in sixth grade. I learned to code in college. Freshman year, first semester, um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had something come up and say, hello world, and it, the, I made a computer do that. It was just astonishing. Learning how to program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or, um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. And I wrote this little program and then basically just add a little bit to it. And then when I needed to learn something new, I looked it up either in a book or on the internet and then added a little bit to it. It's really not unlike kind of playing an instrument or something or, 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 you know, or playing a sport. It starts out being very intimidating, but you kind of get the hang of it over time. Coding is something that can be learned. And um, I know it can be intimidating. A lot of things are intimidating, but uh, you know, what isn't? A lot of the coding that people do is actually fairly simple. Um, it's, it's more about the process of breaking down problems than... Uh, you know. Right, well, you get the idea. Um, it is something that is required in all fields. And you might have heard Bill Gates saying that the first program he wrote was a tic-tac-toe. So this is something that many people do because it's, it's fun. You design a game. This is, this is actually what we do at the GUC. The first big project that you get is the game. Uh, uh, and it teaches you a lot about programming. It teaches you a lot about how to approach a big problem. And so this is uh, uh, our philosophy uh, here. And uh, if you take a look at the statistics about the job opportunities, you will see that computer science is a booming field. There are so many job opportunities in so many different fields, not just in AI and computer science, in security, in the IT sector, in software development, in software engineering, uh, in so many different types of, uh, of fields. And the nice thing is that the number of computer science graduates is actually not increasing significantly. In some countries, it's actually showing that it is decreasing. So you are in a sector that is in very, very high demand and the supply is very short. And so the competition for good computer scientists is huge uh, among companies and everyone is fighting for excellent or good uh, software developers, which is why you will find that MET graduates are able to find jobs everywhere. They are able to work in Germany, in the US, in Europe, other countries, uh, they are able to find jobs easily and they are able to find excellent careers in the top companies in the world like Google and Amazon and Facebook. Every year we have our top graduates working in some of the most uh, advanced and excellent companies around the world. Okay, one very nice thing about the MET is that everyone, uh, is that there is always someone willing to help, whether it's professors or TAs. We're always here to help you, we're always here to guide you. Uh, you will learn a little bit about the phrase working under stress because we do believe that uh, to uh, uh, be the best you have to make a lot of effort, you have to put in a lot of effort and you will do that as part of uh, uh, the MET but the good thing about that is after you graduate you really will be among the best graduates in the field in Egypt and in the Middle East and in actually many other parts of the world as well. Okay, so now we come to the question of the day. Um, our majors. At the MET, we have two majors. We have computer science and engineering, and we have digital media engineering and technology. Um, both 
majors are taught in the same philosophy. So they follow the same vision of the MET, which is practice-oriented learning with a research component and a strong theoretical uh, component as well. I would say that uh, CSEN is the, let's say, the main major that we have in the faculty, and DMET is a very specialized major that teaches some uh, specific components related to uh, computer science and engineering, and this is something that I will uh, discuss. And so, as we said earlier in the session, to choose the major, you have to know um, what you will learn. And this is what I will start with. Um, what do we learn in computer science and engineering versus digital media engineering and uh, technology? Let's actually take a look at your entire journey at the GUC to see how everything fits within the bigger picture. We can actually divide the courses that we study as METNs into different tracks. We start actually with the basics. We take uh, CS1 and CS2, math courses, we take data structures and algorithms, and the, as we said, the first big project that you do is the game, CSEN 403, Fundamentals of Computer Programming. And um, at this step, you are actually introduced to what, is, what it is like to being a software developer. You are, get actually a big problem that you have to decompose into smaller problems and you have to tackle one problem at a time. And at the end, you come up with um, uh, a finished product that you are proud, uh, proud of. And this is actually your first output in the GUC. And you know that uh, your colleagues have over the years several excellent products such as the ones that you see in this video. Excellent stuff. Um, all the courses that you have seen are common between all METNs for the first four semesters. Now, you are choosing your major in the fifth semester because starting the fifth semester, you will start to get courses that are directly related to your major and your major only. From the fifth semester onwards, you will start to get at least one course per semester that is only for your major. As you advance throughout the semesters, you will get more courses that are uh, only, uh, 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 only in your major. And we can actually divide these courses into different tracks. The first track is the one that you see here is development and technology. And between CSEN and DMET, I actually study two different directions in development and technology. Uh, we can say that CSEN studies more uh, the software engineering part, the software development part. Um, we all take databases, which you will take in the fifth semester. Uh, a CSEN major will take software engineering, will take a couple of advanced computer labs where they will mainly apply the uh, methods and the knowledge that is, they studied in software uh, engineering towards a big project. That's basically, basically the philosophy. In software engineering, you basically study how to approach a big pro a problem, how do you actually engineer the entire software development process, and you apply this knowledge towards later uh, uh, projects. On the other hand, DMET will study more uh, courses related to web technology. Uh, you will study uh, the web, how to de design, for example, a web page or a website, and you will actually go through different uh, uh, lab courses to study practical components related to that. For example, you will go a little bit into uh, mobile development, you will go a little bit into front-end development and front-end technologies, uh, uh, media technologies and things like that. This is actually the track development and technology and how it differs between the two majors. And over the years, these are some of the projects that you see uh, as differences between CSCN and uh, DMET. For example, the MET website was designed by uh, um, <clears throat> students uh, in the CSCN major several years ago. 
and some of the projects that uh, uh, have been produced, especially in the software engineering course, have led to actually complete startups being established uh, by students. Okay. Um, there is also the hardware track, and the hardware track is mostly common among the two majors. Um, you know that you study digital logic design, circuits one and circuits two. This is something that uh, you have already gone through. Computer organization, uh, starting the sixth semester, you will have actually different courses, computer architecture, digital system design, embedded systems architecture, and there's only one course that only CSEN takes, which is the microprocessors course. The hardware track is where you, we can say we find the engineering component. This is what um, uh, makes a computer scientist different from a computer engineer. So you study the computer engineering compon uh, component of your uh, curriculum. And uh, as we see here, there are actually many hardware courses that you will have to uh, take to become either a computer science, uh, science and engineering graduate or a digital media engineering graduate. And uh, these are also some of the projects that have been produced over uh, the years. I'll just uh, show you a couple of ones. Another one. The circuit beta'at is sound sheet. Fi hena the easy VR voice recognition sheet. With the animatronic hand. With all the five servos, all the servos be controlled for one. Fi hena the circuit battery and all the servos. بطري 9 volts ودخلها على regulator عشان السيرفو بياخد 5 volts 1 Seven. Okay, let's uh, let's see this one too. في نفس الوقت ان احنا تميل في 
اربع اتجاهات فجت فكره جبنا كوره بيا ولحمناها في العمود والجزء الثاني عملناه بحيث ان هي البلاتفورم تبقى ساند عليه فبقت معانا بتميل في كل الاتجاهات وفي كل الانجلز يوزنج الخيوط او الحبال الموجوده في كل كورنر وبتتشد للمواتير عشان نأفويد مشكلة الحبال التنشن بيتقسم لكومبوننت لما بتعدي على الكورنر جوه العمود وهي رايحة على الموتور عملنا البكرة اللي هي بيبقى اسمها بكرة حمام بيلد عشان تلف مع الحبل لما يبقى فيه تنشن عشان التنشن ما يتقسمش او ما يضيعش في العمود من جوه الموتور بتاعنا كان لازم يبقى اونلاين اوكي ليتس جو فور ذا لاست وان احنا البروجكت بتاعنا روبوتيك ارم هو كنترولد وايرلسلي في ترانزميتنج سايد وريسيفنج سايد وبالنسبه للريسيفنج سايد ده اللي فيه الارم نفسها فيها ثلاثه موتورز ده بيحرك الجريب ده بيحرك الاكسس دي وده بيلف الارم كلها ده كل واحد فيهم بيلف اتجاهين بتوتال انجل 180 ومتوصلين بالاردوينو كلهم والوايرلس بيجي من الاكس بي والسيجنال ده ده الريسيفر السيجنال بتيجي من الترانزميتر من هنا هو في ستة بوش بوتنز كل واحد كل موتور ليه اثنين لكل اتجاه بس كل ما بتدوس على بوش بوتن سيجنال جيتس ترانزميتد للريسيفر بيحرك الموتورز. يلا. دلوقتي هنديمونستريت الحركه بتاعت الثلاثه موتورز ده اول موتور اللي بيكنترول الجريب ده اللي تورك فيهم ودوت الموتور دوت اعلى تورك فيهم اللي بيكنترول الحركه بتاعت الريست دوت ودوت اخر موتور اللي بيكنترول الموشن بتاع ال بتاع الارم ليفت ورايت دلوقتي هنشرح الاكس بي ازاي بيشتغل الاكس بي ده هو اللي مشغل وايرلس بين الاثنين مايكرو كنترولر او الاثنين اردوينو البوتنز دي لما بتدافع عليها ستة بوتنز بتبعت بتسيت بن هنا على الاردوينو وبترايت في الاكس بي يوزنج يو ارت بتبعت اسكي كود او اسكي سترينج معين للاكس بي اللي هناك فانا كل ما بدوس على بوتن كل ما بدوس على بوتن هنا عندي ال دي بتنديكيت ان البوتن ده الداس طبعا ده غير ان الموتورز تتحرك تمام اوكي سو يو كان سي ذات ذيس بروجيكتس ريكواير ا لوت اوف افورت اند يو كان سي ان ايديا اباوت وات وي مين باي براكتس اورينتد ليرنينج ذيس ار جاست ذا كورس بروجيكتس ذيس ار ذا بروجيكتس ذات ذا ستودنتس دو ان سم اوف ذا هاردوير كورسز ذات وي ذات اي هاف شون يو um so in these courses you will actually get the chance to do some of these projects as well and this is actually regardless of whether you choose the CSCN and DMET uh, major okay you'll also be taking some networks courses and these are the ones that I teach at the MET starting with introduction to communications networks in uh, uh, the fifth semester and following with uh, multimedia networking in the sixth semester this should say six not uh, seven Uh, and computer network security in the 10th uh, semester. These courses give you an idea about uh, how networks work, how the internet works. Uh, the security component is uh, particularly important because it's a field of its own. Uh, you will get the chance to study cryptography, you'll get to uh, the chance to study a little bit about vulnerabilities in networks and ethical hacking and some of these uh, uh, topics. In these courses, you will actually also get an intro about how to design Uh, uh, your first website it would be a very basic website because this knowledge is then something that you will uh, build upon in the software engineering courses and you will uh, uh, focus also on uh, security to basically uh, learn how to 
create a secure app at the end of uh, your uh, study at the G at the MET. Now, these courses are more or less similar, so there is not a lot of differences between the CSEN and DMAT uh, majors, just maybe in the development uh, te technology uh, courses. Um, even there, they actually tackle more or less the development track, but with two different perspectives. Now we can actually say uh, what are the core differences between CSEN and DMAT, and we can actually say that the differences lie in the advanced courses. Uh, in CSEN, you will study more courses towards algorithms, you will study more courses towards computer theory. Uh, for example, you will be taking Database 2, uh, Math 5, which is discrete math, uh, design and analysis of algorithms. You will take a very important course, which is artificial intelligence in the ninth semester. This is actually a, uh, an intro to one of the most important and most one of the most dominant fields of research in computer science today, which is artificial intelligence. Uh, compiler and compiler lab is something that you will study in the uh, 10th semester. So in the CSEN major, the uh, idea is that you go deeper into theory and algorithms so that you are able to uh, understand more how does a computer work internally and how can you actually make your uh, software smarter and faster and smaller so that at the end of the day you learn how to create more intelligent computers, more intelligent applications. For example, if you have ever thought uh, about how something like Siri works, uh, it needs smart voice recognition that works with a, a very wide variety of accents, very wide variety of uh, uh, languages, and uh, uh, Siri is able to understand all of that. And this is not just smart hardware, it is also smart software. It has to be able to do natural, something called natural language processing, which is actually making the computer understand language. Uh, the spoken words, they have to be divided actually into words. Um, basically, the, your phone will just simply be getting an audio signal and it has to decompose this audio signal to uh, specific words and then it has to understand these words. All of, the, all of this while actually taking into consideration that there are different access, uh, accents and languages and all of that. Uh, this is what you will be studying in computer science and engineering. Basically, how to make the software development process smarter and better uh, overall. Okay. In digital media engineering, we can actually divide the courses that you will study into different categories, starting with graphics and design. You will take some courses about computer graphics and visualization and animation. Basically, here you will be studying the uh, basics of computer graphics and how to generate graphics and uh, uh, basic animations or simple animations on a computer. After that, uh, and here there have actually been uh, former students who have designed some excellent uh, uh, computer, computer graphics software and things like that are uh, gamified, as I will show you some examples of previous projects here. Right, that gives you an idea about the kind of work you can actually do in, uh, in uh, these courses. Okay. There is also a track that focuses on signal processing because in digital media engineering, you have to really understand how signals work. You have to understand media, you have to understand uh, audio and acoustics, you have to do digital signal processing, and before that, you will, that's you're taking now the intro, which is signals and system uh, design. Um, why do we study these courses? Because they are foundational courses. Uh, for example, if you want to design a good audio system, you have to understand how audio signals work, how audio signals propagate. Uh, how do you actually uh, process these audio signals so that you can create a better uh, sound system overall? Um, actually, we have found over the years that a lot of people who are interested in becoming DJs, for example, or be, um, um, becoming audio engineers, they are interested in uh, many of these courses. <clears throat> and uh, the final track is the visual computing track. You will be studying uh, courses related to image processing and computer vision. 
these are actually some of the most important fields in computer science now, how to make a computer understand images and understand video. Uh, uh, computer vision is becoming one of the most important fields out there, especially when it comes to self-driving cars, for example. Uh, self-driving cars are fundamentally focused on computer vision because you want to make the car understand how uh, the environment is like, where are the obstacles, where, are, where is the drivable area, uh, how to actually map uh, a journey from source to destination while avoiding these uh, obstacles and these uh, undrivable areas, for example. You'll also be studying uh, video processing and video and audio technology, which is the continuation of uh, the signal processing uh, track that we just uh, discussed. By the way, the courses that have the double asterisk ne next to it, these are the advanced courses. These are the courses that you will study um, uh, at the end of, uh, towards the end of your curriculum. Both majors, computer science and engineering and digital in media engineering and technology, get to take certain elective courses. There are two elective courses in the ninth semester and two elective courses in the 10th semester uh, as well. Um, in most cases, the elective courses are common. There are a common between two majors, I, uh, I would say. There are just some courses that are special to one major, and these are the courses that require the, uh, let's say, the foundational knowledge that uh, you have gotten in, uh, in that major. But most elective courses are common between majors, and the elective courses are a chance for you to study a specialized subject. For example, uh, I give an elective course in the ninth semester, which is about advanced networking, which is a chance for you to understand more or at a deeper level how networks work. Uh, there is a course that we are running right now, which is Introduction to Biomedical Engineering. Uh, there is a course which is Natural Language Processing. There are courses that focus on a specific area in computer science, and you will be able to choose these courses if they are of interest uh, to you. Okay. Um, these are some of the projects as well that students have uh, done in the visual computing uh, uh, courses. Uh, let's take a look at one of them, which is the Human Computer Interaction course, which is an elective in the ninth semester. <laughs> All right, so this project, as you see here, involves gesture recognition, and gesture recognition really shows you how uh, studying hardware and studying software components can actually uh, uh, be combined. Um, for gesture recognition, you need actually a tool to, under, to make the computer understand gestures. This is either uh, a camera or uh, an infrared device, uh, just, uh, just like the Wii controller or something like that in the gaming. Uh, and so once the computer is able to understand that, you have to train it. You have to use, for example, uh, machine learning or something like that, so that the uh, computer understands that when you do a gesture like this, this is what you mean. You have to code it after that in a program that says, for example, once you detect this gesture, you will increase the volume. Once you detect this gesture, you will decrease the volume, or something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are some myths about the two majors and about the faculty itself, which I would like to discuss. This is just something that we have uh, accumulated over the years that uh, just like any other rumors, you, you know, any other rumor, you really don't know where it starts, but it propagates and many students unfortunately uh, believe them. So I want just to make sure that you have the right idea about uh, the two majors and about the faculty. The first myth is CSEN is about hardware. This is obviously not true. You have seen that most of the hardware courses are common among the two majors, and in fact, there's only one course that is taken only by CSEN, which is the microprocessors course. So this is obviously a myth. DMET is about signals. Uh, you, even though you do take uh, three uh, signal processing courses that uh, the CSEN major doesn't take, uh, however, this is not what the major is about. The signal processing courses that you take are foundational courses that will enable you to do a lot of things after that. They will enable you to do video processing, audio and acoustics. So these are basic courses that you study so that you can do other advanced uh, courses, but this is not the core of the major. You have seen, for example, that DMET studies computer graphics and visualization courses that uh, uh, are not related necessarily to signal processing. 
Um, there is also a myth that MATNs are game developers, or especially DMATNs are game developers. This is also not true. We don't actually teach game development at the MAT. We teach some of the tools that will allow you to build on that in game development. For example, there's a course in the ninth semester that teaches you Unity. Uh, Unity is one of the most important and well-known game development engines. But we don't teach gaming structure, we don't teach gaming design. Uh, we just teach foundational graphics courses that you can then use to uh, uh, build upon that if this is something that interests you. Um, fourth myth is that DMATNs are graphics or web designers. Um, this is also wrong. Even though we teach some computer graphics courses, we teach them for the purpose of studying how computers generate graphics, the tools themselves. So as a DMATN, you will be able to design this tool. But being a graphics designer or web designer, this is more of something related to applied arts. This is what they design, they, this is what they study, but this is not what we uh, teach. Um, and the fifth myth, myth is that DMAT is an easier version of CSEN. This is obviously not true. It's a completely different uh, set of courses, completely different set of talents. And it's up to you to decide whether this uh, specialized major is of uh, importance to you or not. And uh, the fifth myth, uh, the final myth is that you, that you don't need a CS degree and that METNs don't find jobs. There is a myth that anyone graduating from any faculty can just take a couple of software development courses and just like that, they are a computer scientist. I hope that by now, after you have studied some of the computer science uh, courses at the GUC, you know that this is nonsense. Um, even though it is true that anyone can actually take some software development courses, but that doesn't make a computer scientist. That just makes a very basic software developer. It doesn't make someone who is able to uh, understand algorithms and use these algorithms to solve problems. It doesn't make an engineer. It doesn't make someone who understands networks and security. It doesn't make someone who understands artificial intelligence and databases. There is a huge bulk of knowledge that you will study to become a computer scientist, to become a computer engineer, that you don't get just by taking a few courses. And so software development is only one of the careers that are possible for you to pursue after you graduate. And even there, you don't compete with someone who just took a few courses to become a software uh, developer. There is a big difference between a competent software developer who, uh, who has all this uh, uh, knowledge underneath uh, their skin and someone who just took a couple of basic courses and Companies know that and companies appreciate that. I know that there is a trend in some of the big companies that they don't necessarily require a university degree in their employees. However, you have to think about that. Uh, um, not everyone is just exceptional by birth. Some people are, some people just have this talent that they can uh, uh, develop good software and they teach themselves this uh, knowledge. But the majority of people require fundamental uh, uh, training, they require this extensive knowledge so that they can pursue this career and companies know that. So even though the door is now open for people without university degrees in only some companies, the majority of companies still look for competency as graduates from uh, a good university such as yourself. Okay. Um, and because we know and we understand very well that technical knowledge is not enough, soft skills, communication skills, team uh, uh, management, time management are some of the most important skills that you will learn as METNs and some of the things that we really consider while we, we are designing our courses and our uh, curriculum. Uh, you will actually get the chance as METNs to travel abroad if you like, and traveling abroad is a unique experience that you get to uh, 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 use to learn about different cultures and learn about uh, how other people do uh, 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 business. And we have so many opportunities for travel. There are language trips, there are summer courses and workshops, there are bachelor projects, there's the semester abroad program in GUC Berlin, and there are internships uh, as well. Uh, for the courses and workshops that we organize, we actually do that every year. Uh, usually we do one in the winter break and more than one in the summer break. And the workshops are a chance to um, learn something about a specific topic. For example, in 2016, we organized a ubiquitous, ubiquitous interactive systems uh, uh, winter workshop. It was in Stuttgart. 
Uh, and we basically learn about human-computer interaction from one of the best institutes uh, in the world at that time. Um, other exhibitions, for example, or workshops was the Mint exhibition where we basically showcase our uh, work. We showcase uh, some of our projects that we design here at the, at the GUC. There are factory visits, there are uh, summer schools, and we organize these every year. There are more than one every year. And this is an excellent chance to learn about a specific topic and uh, travel as well. Uh, there's also the semester abroad in Berlin. And obviously, you know uh, by now that if you do more than uh, three or more semesters at UC Berlin, you get actually a dual, a dual degree from GIU uh, University in, in uh, Berlin. And students take advantage of this opportunity all the time. As for bachelor projects, um, the MET is very active in finding bachelor uh, thesis opportunities in Germany. Obviously, you do that in the eighth uh, semester. The map that you see here is the bachelor uh, projects that uh, were uh, afforded to the students in spring 2018. And the map only shows the bachelor opportunities that were paid. Okay. So every year we provide also some opportunities that are paid from the institution in Germany, in addition to a bunch of our bachelor thesis opportunities that are also uh, uh, not, not paid. And when you do the bachelor thesis in Germany, you get also the chance to do the three months in internship in the academic institution that you will do your bachelor thesis uh, in. It's an excellent opportunity to work with some of the best researchers around the world and see how university cultures are different in uh, Germany as well. Uh, we also provide opportunities to work with uh, industries, and we do this in, in many ways. Uh, there are internships that we sometimes facilitate through our collaboration with the industry. Uh, there are also, also bachelor projects from uh, companies. These are primarily in uh, Germany, but we have some from Egypt as well. And over the years, we were able also to um, uh, collaborate with some companies to offer some electives jointly with some of our faculty uh, members. This actually brings us to our faculty members. Um, this figure here is not up to date. You can actually take a look at our research portfolios uh, on the MET website. Uh, our faculty members work in so many different areas, uh, such as uh, the Internet of Things, HCI, uh, uh, self-driving cars, uh, knowledge representation, uh, software engineering, natural language processing, uh, machine learning. We have people working in so many different uh, fields, visual computing, for example. And so um, uh, we try to incorporate some of these uh, research projects in our teaching, and especially in the bachelor thesis that we offer. And we provide also opportunities with so many different partners in Egypt and abroad in Germany and in other countries uh, as well. Okay. Um, for extracurricular activities, there are obviously the clubs that you uh, participate in, but there are special extracurricular activities that are, that are only for uh, METNs, and obviously these are common between the two uh, majors. For example, there is the ACM community, and the uh, MET has been significantly successful in the ACM community in that every year one of our teams travels to uh, uh, the finals, the ICPC, uh, annually. There has been also other competitions, such as the RoboCup competition, which uh, our former graduates have quite often done excellent jobs in. Okay, so, um, last point. What are the job opportunities? Once you graduate, you will get actually the chance to pursue a job in mainly one of three different directions. Either corporates, you work for a company, or you establish a startup, or you work for a startup, or you go for an academic career where you pursue research by doing master's or a PhD as well. Um, in corporates, you are actually getting a chance to pursue so many different types of job opportunities. And the salaries that I'm showing uh, here, that's actually a little bit outdated. That was in 2018. I would say the current salaries start from 6,000 or 7,000 Egyptian pounds. There are so many different fields that uh, uh, look for computer scientists. There are uh, software developers, obviously. There are consultants, tech support en engineers, IT system admins. There are also data scientists and people who look specifically uh, for graduates that have the algorithmic background, that have the AI background uh, uh, to do uh, uh, certain jobs. For example, 
Swivel hires people with an algorithmic background so that they are they can optimize the routes, how buses travel over different routes, how to optimize this travel. This is purely a computer science problem, and you need someone with a good algorithmic background to solve this problem. So it's not just software development. It's actually a very wide variety of uh, uh, things. In Egypt, there are also several companies who now have embraced data science fully, and they're looking for people with knowledge in machine learning and data engineering, and these are some of the electives that you will get to take at uh, the MET, and you can certainly uh, pursue a career here in Egypt or abroad as well. Um, our graduates find jobs in some of the top companies in the world. Every year we get people going for Google or Facebook or Amazon, uh, as well as so many other successful uh, companies like SAP, uh, IBM, Microsoft, some of the top companies in the world hire GUCNs every year. Um, and these are just some examples that I'm showing you here of some of our former graduates who have become very successful in some of these uh, companies. We have had also graduates uh, establish very successful uh, startups. For example, one of the most success, uh, one of the most important success stories of the MET is uh, Robusta, which has uh, become one of the biggest software houses uh, uh, in uh, Egypt, and it was developed by GUC graduates, some of the earlier uh, MET graduates, uh, as it was. There's also other companies like uh, Trustius, which is more or less a data science company, and there have been other examples uh, throughout the years. Um, our graduates are able also to pursue a master's and PhD in some of the top universities in uh, the world, mainly in Germany, because this is how, how, where our uh, main contacts are. And so we have had graduates go for uh, RWTH in Aachen or DFKE or Stuttgart, of course, and Ulm University. Many, many other universities like uh, TUM, which now hosts a big number of MET graduates every year, especially in their uh, Data Science Institute, which has become very, very powerful and very uh, important in uh, the field. And these are just some examples of our ambassadors in research, people who have actually pursued successful uh, uh, masters and PhD careers in different uh, universities. And so we have come to the end. Uh, keep calm, pursue the career that you like. This is actually uh, the most important thing that I will end my talk with. You have to uh, go for something that you are interested in. Forget actually the noise, forget uh, people saying, no, this is not very successful. You will never actually achieve success in this field. Find something that you are passionate about, find something that you want to learn about and go for that so that you will have fun while uh, learning. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Just shoot me an email at amr.ilmugi at gc.edu.eg. Stay safe, and hopefully we will uh, see you sometime soon.